Attack, crunch, disrupt. So why choose Amazon as the partner for growth? Um, so I mean, you know, the, obviously with those rumors in the press, uh, it's, it's probably an easy assumption for everyone to make. Uh, when you see that written down, I think that's what your natural assumption is. Uh, Amazon was a really great fit for us for a couple of reasons. Uh, we went down, we pitched them, we talked to them about, about our future, we got to talk to them, and uh, they pitched us on what they thought their future was. We, we got to get some meeting of the minds on gaming, where we thought gaming was going, um, and how we saw the future of the gaming industry. And we really had the same vision for what we thought was going to happen. Um, and we also had a shared vision for it being Twitch that did it, that it wouldn't be, we weren't going to be a uh, subsumed, we were going to be a powerful independent brand. Um, and Amazon has a great track record of buying companies that way. You look, at, you, know, you look at Zappos, I mean, even look at IMDB, which I think they bought more than 10 years ago, and the, has this founder still running it, uh, still a strong, independent, powerful brand on the internet. Uh, and that made me really uh, excited to have that level of independence um, and get to keep running Twitch. You know, buying your company for a billion dollars, it seems like Amazon expects you guys to get a lot bigger. So where is that growth going to come from? I think there's a, a bunch of places that comes from. One of the most important things is, you know, today we've grown a lot in PC. Recently we started growing a lot on console as well, um, due to, thanks to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 integrations that we did. And there's a huge amount to grow on console because these new generation consoles are just at the, they're at the start of that takeoff, right? They're not, uh, they don't have the penetration that the last generation did. And so we expect to see a ton of growth in console. We expect to, see, expect to continue to see growth on PC. And I think most importantly, we expect to see a lot of growth in mobile as well. We've started to see really encouraging growth from a lot of the top mobile games uh, as broadcasting from mobile platforms becomes more possible. How do you guys feel about virtual reality? Is that an opportunity as well or no? Anywhere, I mean, our rule of thumb is really simple. Anywhere that you play video games and share, have a video gaming experience, we want to enable you to share that. Now, there's obviously technical barriers in sharing a VR experience. But what we've seen is that the, the player's uh, heads up point of view is actually rarely the best view for watching the game. It sometimes is. But if you think about it, like you wouldn't watch football from a GoPro strapped to the head of an NFL quarterback. I mean, it might be interesting for a little bit, but it's much better to have a top-down view of the field. Same thing is true for VR, right? It might be an amazing way to play a game, and maybe if it has really high penetration, eventually you might drop yourself into the world and watch through VR as well, but it's likely that watching a VR game, you'll get sort of that top-down view on a flat screen. It'll just be rendered separately uh, from the VR experience itself. But we're very, very excited about VR gaming. We think that, like tablet gaming, uh, it offers a huge growth area for gaming in general, and anywhere there's gaming, we think Twitch can be. You've got the World Finals for the League of Legends coming up uh, in South Korea next month. Uh, how many people do you expect that to draw in? I mean, it seems like League and you guys are going unchecked. Well, they've got, a pretty, they've got a pretty big bar to, to cross this year. Last year, online viewership was 32 million. 32 million uniques. This year, it's in a larger venue, 60,000 physical attendees. And the game's grown a lot internationally. And one of the big spaces that we didn't talk about is international growth. Um, Asia, South America, as they grow, and broadband penetration for both and then PC and, and consoles are now being launched in a lot of countries that they weren't last generation. Uh, more and more people are, are paying attention to competitive gaming, esports in general. Uh, I think they'll hit a pretty big number. I mean, they, they, they crossed the threshold for BCS championships, NBA Finals Game 7. Uh, I think the NFL better look out. So last year, really quickly, uh, Sony did a big site-wide PlayStation sponsorship. Can we look forward to anything uh, for actually you know, the World Finals of, you know, this is like the Super Bowl of gaming, so we're going to do big flashy ads. Anything like that, big sponsors that we should be looking for? I think, I think the, the industry is certainly trending towards that overall. I mean, as any, as any space gets big in entertainment, bigger and bigger sponsors want to wanna, you know, get in on that. They want to reach that audience. So I think this year, who knows? I think over the, over the next couple of years, you're going to see a lot of big non-endemic brands come in. You see, you see people like Coca-Cola already sponsoring uh, Riot this year. Uh, they'll probably do more next year. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of companies are going to want to emulate that. They're going to, they're going to want to capture that experience. Uh, but I think the gaming industry as a whole is going to be much more careful about it. They want to make sure that the brands that are coming in are good for their audience. Uh, so it may take a couple years to find that balance.